Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to check the HD0 Freestyle Digital VTX. In this video I'm going to quickly go over its features and specs, show you how to set it up, measure its output power and perform a range test. First of all, this video is kindly sponsored by WinXDVD, a software company that enables you to easily convert videos on your Mac or Windows computer. They are currently having a contest in which you'll be able to win some nice prizes, including the DJI Mini 2. The participation link is included down below, and in order to participate in this contest, you'll need to upload an original spring-themed video based on your location. As for the WinX video converter, it will enable you to convert 4K videos and supports most of the file types that currently exist. It supports batch downloading videos from more than 1000 websites, compress large video files with no quality loss, edit your videos, add subtitles, and adjust the video parameters like bitrate, frame rate, and etc. The software features a user-friendly interface, and in case you are interested, you can check it out in the links down below. Now let's get back to the main topic of this video, the HD0 Freestyle VTX. Just to make things clear, this is a digital video transmitter, which means that it is not supported by analog video receivers, and currently, at the moment of shooting this video, it is only compatible with the Shockbyte digital transmission system. As for its specs, its output power can be set to 25 or 200 milliwatts, and once unlocked, you'll be able to set it to 500 milliwatts or even to 1 watt. It can only be powered directly with between 2 to 4 S batteries, so make sure, in case you are going to use it on a 6S setup for example, to use the included BEC, or use the BEC of your flight controller, just make sure that it is going to get enough power, as when it is going to be set to 1 watt, its power consumption is going to be 15 watts. In addition, the Freestyle VTX is using 30.5 by 30.5 mm M3 mounting holes, its outer dimensions are 40.5 by 40 by 9.5 mm. The MIPI connector of the camera and the IPX connector of the antenna are secured using two metal plates and Phillips screws. On its own, it weighs 28.1 grams. Including the RHCP antenna that comes with it, it weighs 29.6 grams, and the total weight, including the HD0 Micro V2 camera and a very short MIPI cable, is 38.3 grams. Now, by the way, it's important to note that only HD0 approved cameras are compatible with the Freestyle VTX and the MIPI cable and camera are not included with the VTX. As for setting up the Freestyle VTX, first you'll need to make sure that both Sharkbite receiver and Freestyle VTX are running the latest firmware. In order to do that, head over to HD0's website, download the relevant firmware files, Place the firmware file of the Sharkbyte receiver on the root folder of the microSD card, power it up, wait for the firmware update to be completed, then you'll need to place the firmware file of the Freestyle receiver again on the root folder of the microSD card, connect the firmware update cable that is included in the Sharkbyte kit to the Freestyle VTX, and again wait for the firmware update to be completed. Similarly, in order to unlock the full power of the Freestyle VTX, you'll need to use this cable, place the file that unlocks the VTX on the root folder of the microSD card, wait for the confirmation on your screen, then you'll need to unplug this cable, power it using an external battery, and make sure to connect an antenna to the UFL connector, as otherwise it is going to be damaged, after that, you'll need to connect again the cable to the Sharkbyte receiver and update it to the latest available firmware. It's important not to skip the part where the VTX is powered externally using a battery and not directly by the Sharkbyte receiver, as otherwise the VTX is not going to be unlocked. Connecting the Freestyle VTX to a flight controller is done using this provided harness. The right pin on this connector is VCC, then ground, TX and RX ports, and the left pin is smart audio. Remember that RX on the VTX is connected to the TX on the flight controller and vice versa, 
in order to get the LSD working, you'll need to use a recent version of Betaflight and enable the MSP slash configuration port on the port that the RX and TX ports are connected to. And you'll also need to type the following command on Betaflight's CLI in order to enable the Betaflight OSD. As for configuring the VTX, in case the smart audio wire is going to be properly connected to a TX port on a flight controller and properly configured on Betaflight, you'll be able to use Betaflight in order to set the channel and output power of the VTX. And in case it's not going to be properly connected, you can either use the control board, which is provided with the Shockbyte system, or use the VTX menu, which by the way, is going to be disabled in case the smart audio feature is going to be in use. Now I'm going to measure the output power of the Freestyle VTX using the Immersion LC RF power meter tool. When the output power is set to 25 milliwatts, I'm getting about 35 milliwatts, and after one minute, the output power is still about 35 milliwatts. On 200 milliwatts, I'm getting about 150 milliwatts, and again, the output power is pretty constant after a minute. On 500 milliwatts, I'm getting about 330 milliwatts, and now the temperature is rising a bit, but again, the output power remains about 330 milliwatts after a minute. Finally, when setting the output power of the VTX to its maximum value of 1 watt, I'm getting about 620 milliwatts. While the VTX is getting pretty hot, the output power remains relatively stable. And when the VTX is cooled down, I'm getting a constant output power of about 650 milliwatts. The next thing that I've done is to head outdoors and test the HD0 Freestyle VTX using my Mavic Air 2, which was restricted to 2.4 GHz in order to prevent it from interfering with the video signal of the VTX. The VTX was set during this test to the maximum output power of 1 watt, and I've tested the receiver setup using the stock patch antennas and two omnidirectional Foxeer Lollipop RHCP antennas. After testing it out, I can tell you that the range of this system is definitely better than the Whoop style VTX that I've previously tested. And according to other videos on YouTube, you should be able to extend the range of this system by upgrading the antennas of the video receiver. Anyway, now I'm going to wrap up this review with some footage from the range test, and you can expect more tests of the Freestyle VTX to be done soon as I'm going to feature this VTX in a build and flight video, which hopefully is going to be ready in the next two weeks or so. As always, I thank you for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and you find it useful. If you have any questions, feel free to ask them in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a thumbs up if you liked this video and consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the notifications bell if you're not already subscribed. See you on my next videos and goodbye.